Hi everyone, Mike from the Excel Trainer here. Today is an exciting day for those of us who use Excel on a Mac. Why? Because Microsoft have finally added the Query Editor to the Mac version of Excel. Now for many of you, I'm sure it's a so what moment. That'll be because A, you don't use Excel on a Mac, or B, because you don't use Power Query. Now this isn't the time or place to do a deep dive on Power Query. That could take hours. But in a nutshell, Power Query does two things. It lets you import data into Excel from a whole variety of external sources, and it lets you quickly and easily clean up and transform imported data. It's been described as the best thing to hit Excel since sliced bread, and is up there with pivot tables and slices and dynamic arrays. At the moment, it's only available to users signed up to the beta channel. Now, let me give you a quick demo. I'm going to start by importing a CSV file, which has originally come from an HR system. So I click on Data, Get Data, select text or CSV. So you can import data from text files, CSV files, and Excel files. So select text or CSV. Then browse and find the file, which is this one here, and click Get Data. And then click Next and click Load. And what that's done is loaded the data into the Excel file and created a table. Behind the scenes, Excel has created a query, which is simply a set of instructions that tells Excel where the data has come from. Now, quite often when you import data into Excel from other sources, the data isn't in the right format for your requirements. And that's where the query editor comes in. So I click on data, click the arrow next to get data and select launch Power Query Editor. I'll also maximize the screen size. The first thing I want to do in this example is to remove the TET dash from the employee number. So with the employee number column selected, which I can do just by clicking on its heading, I click on transform, extract, and I'm going to choose text after delimiter. Extract means keep. So I want to keep the text after a particular character or set of characters. That's what a delimiter is. So I'll select that. The delimiter is the dash and click on OK. The next thing I want to do is combine the first name and surname into a single column. So I'll click on the first name column, hold the shift key down and click on the surname column to select those two. And it is important which order you select them in. Now this time I'm going to click add column and that will create a new column and then merge columns. And the separator is going to be a space and the new column name is going to be name. And I've now got a new column called name. The original two columns are still there. The third thing I want to do is remove anybody who has left the company. So in other words, anybody who's got a value in the leave date column, and I want to only leave the ones that have null in there. So click the drop down arrow to do a filter against leave date, deselect everything and just select null and click on OK. And now we have just the ones with null in there. So that is everybody who is still with the company. The final thing I'll do is to calculate the age of each person given their date of birth. So I'll select the date of birth column and then click on add column, date, age. Now that returns the age in number of days. First thing I'll do is change the data type of that column to be decimal number. And with that column selected, I will click on transform, standard, divide, and divide by 365.25 and click on OK. That will give me the person's age in years. I'm taking the number of days, dividing it by 365. And finally, for the age column, I'm going to select rounding, round, and two decimal places. That is just a small selection of the kind of thing you can do in the query editor. I'm going to close the query editor by clicking on home, close and load, and it will 
update the data in the spreadsheet. Now, you might be thinking, I can do all of that in Excel. And yes, you can. But in many cases, it's faster to do it in Power Query. Plus, you don't end up with a bunch of formulas. You end up with text or numbers. So if we look in column L, we've got text entries and column M, we've got numeric entries, which require less storage space and less processing power than formulas. And probably the most important benefit is that if the source data changes, you simply have to click on data, refresh all. And not only will the new data be loaded, replacing the existing data, but all those data cleaning and transforming actions that I've just done will automatically be performed behind the scenes. So you don't have to go through that process every time. You do the work up front, which is what I've just done, but then you can just click refresh and it will go through those actions every time. But there's so much more that you can do with Power Query. What I've shown you is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm not going to show you how to do this next thing. I'm just going to show you something that Power Query is capable of using an awesome feature called Unpivot. So imagine that you've got data structured in a table layout like this, where we've got headings down the column A and headings across row one. It looks like a pivot table, but it's not a pivot table. For what I need to do, I need to have the data in a plain list like this. Now imagine having to manually convert data in that structure or that format into that format. Well, you can do it in literally two or three clicks with Power Query. So I think that's enough excitement for one day. Now, if you found this video useful, please give it a like and make sure you subscribe for more. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments below. I also have a free weekly newsletter packed with tips and tricks to help you become more productive in Excel. And you can sign up for that at the exceltrainer.co.uk. But until the next time, have an excellent day.